Let's do some uh, metric conversions here to get you familiar with it, all right? Uh, first one, let me show you how the factory label method works applying the uh, metric system. So let's do 64 centimeters, 2 meters. So all these problems are going to be very straightforward and just say like, hey, you got a certain quantity, convert it to another quantity. The base unit will be the same though. You're never going to convert from like centimeters to kilograms. That doesn't make sense. It's not, it's just not something you can do. The base unit will be the same. So the way you're going to set this up is very simple. It's like what I just showed you with the factor label method. You write out your chart. You immediately take whatever you're given and put it right here, 64 centimeters. Now, you should copy this down, centimeters right here, gets copied instantaneously to that bottom right square. Because remember, whatever unit you have there, you want it to cancel automatically, right? Now, what is our goal in this case? What are we trying to get to? Meters. Trying to get to meters. So you put meters up there. Now this part you should be able to again set up without even like thinking. Just copy it down from the problem. Now the thing is though, what are we missing here that's kind of important, right? We're missing numbers. You're allowed to talk, it's okay, I'm serious. So we're missing numbers. Now, here's how we're gonna do this. You look at your scale, you look at your chart, and I want you to think, which thing is bigger or higher up on this chart? Meters or centimeters? Meters is higher up, it's, it's, it's a base unit, so, and a base unit is theoretically bigger in the scale than, than a centi, a centi anything. So to make this easy for us when we're first learning, to make this easy, here's what we do. Whichever thing is bigger, you put a one next to it. So one meter. This allows us to avoid using negative exponents when we're first learning this, which is otherwise confusing. So it's got a one. Now, regardless of whether you're going up or down on the chart, like it doesn't matter if you're going up or down or whatever, you're just gonna count the steps now. So you're starting at the base of meter, or you can go with centi, it doesn't matter which way you go. And you're gonna count how many jumps it is. So in this case, it's one, two, right? Two jumps, two, two spaces on the chart. Now the metric system is based on tens. So that means it's 10, times 10, which is what? 100. Or, to be fancy, 10 to the second. Now, I'm not writing in there today, but tomorrow I'm going to be writing all these values using exponents, just to be clear, because you want to start thinking of things more in that nature. Today I'm going to write it in as 100. Tomorrow it's going to be 10 to the second. All right? And you guys got to start getting comfortable with that. Is there any questions on that to this point? Like why I did that, anything along those lines? Yeah. So, so at, but we went to centi, not milli. Sorry. So we went to centi. So yeah, every jump's, you know, 10. So if you go one spot, it's 10, two spots, 10 to the second, three spots, 10 to the third, and so on and so forth for a long ways. Now, the next thing to be aware of, you do this, you cancel your units out, in this case, what are we going to get right now? Your unit is going to be meters, yeah. Now, in case you struggle with the math at all looking at this, just as a reminder, we've got 64 times 1 divided by 100. I assume you're going to do that, but just to show you, I'll show you this a few times today, just to make sure you're comfortable with the fact label method. What's the, uh, what's the answer not in scientific notation? What do we get? What? 0 0.64 meters, yeah. Because it's 64 divided by 100. Now, you should write it in scientific notation, you really should. So you're gonna move the decimal po point over one spot, it'll be 6.4 times 10 to the negative first meters. On the quiz tomorrow, you are not responsible for writing your answer in scientific notation. On the test next week, you are. Yeah. Why is this negative? Because you moved it over to the right, 
and whenever you move a, deci or a decimal point to the right for scientific notation, it's negative. Another way to think of it, this number is less than 1, right? 0.64 is less than 1, right? Anytime you do that, you're going to have a negative exponent. If the number is greater than 1, it'll be positive when you move the decimal. Okay? All right. So, any other questions on the first example? Okay, let's do another example. So let's look at, uh, let's make another one. So that time we went from centimeters to meters. So let's go the other way. Let's go, let's see, we've got 4.2 kilometers to meters. So we've got 4.2 kilometers. Let's convert that to meters. Now you should be good setting this up again. You copy your thing down right into the problem. You copy kilometers down because again, whatever you have there, you instantly just just transfer it. Like just transfer. It. I wish if you wrote it there it just popped up right there. That'd be nice. Your goal is to get to meters. So write that there. Now, questions getting to this point. Good? All right. Now, the next thing. Think about meters and kilometers, looking at our little scale here. So, meters and kilometers. What is bigger on this chart? What's higher up? Kilometer. Kilometer is higher, yes. So, in this case, where are we going to put the one? That's kilometers. So, you see, you're not always putting the one on the top or the bottom. It's just you're looking at your units and you're setting it up according to your problem. Okay, that's the important part. I want you to realize that. Now you're gonna count the jumps here, so it'll be one, two, three. That's 10 times 10 times 10. That's the same thing as 10 to the third or a, a thousand. Now again, I'm gonna write it today as a thousand. Tomorrow it's gonna be 10 to the third from here on out, okay? So you do that. Now in this case, in just, just in case you wanna see it, here's how the math would look without all the fancy, you know, factor label stuff and anything. That's all it would be. Yeah. Um, why is there a one that's not one? Why is there a one there? Yeah. So again, that's a good question. So. The reason we put a one there, we gotta put a one somewhere. And the reason we put it there is because in our, the way we do things, you just put it next to the largest prefix, whatever is biggest. Now, the reason there's gotta be a one in general is this. Um, think about like, you know, our meter stick here. I mean, it doesn't really work for kilometers, but like, you know, one of these meter sticks is equal to 0 .001 kilometers. So what we're saying right here, is that one kilometer is equal to a thousand meters. These mean the same thing. Like one kilometer is the same as a thousand meters. So we're not changing the distance at all, are we? We're just changing how we write it. That's why we always have to put a one somewhere, all right? Because if we were to write like a two there or something and left that as a thousand, then it's changing everything. You see what I'm saying? So that's why we always do one and then, you know, factor of 10. Prefix, yes, it's a good question. So, we have this, you do the math, you end up with 4,200 meters, cancel your kilometers out, and then again, I would suggest you write it in scientific notation, 1, 2, 3, 4.2 times 10 to the third. And see, it'd be really nice, because if you had written this in scientific notation as, as 10 to the third, you wouldn't even, you just, it's, instant, it's already done for you, isn't it? The problem's already done. 4.2 times 10 to the third. So that's nice. Yeah, I think it's easier. Then again, I'm a chemistry teacher. Any questions on this? Yeah. Back first. I can't hear you. Say it again. So I took 4.2 times 1,000, and that gave us the 4,200. Because if they're on top, you multiply. And then, like, let's say this was on the bottom, you would divide the numbers instead. Like, what all this is right here 
this works out to this mathematical expression right here, okay? So I bet you can recognize that's 4.2 times 1,000. So that's what this means. That's why I'm showing you like that, okay? So good? So, so this is a good question. It doesn't matter which way you go using our thing. So if you put the one by whichever prefix is biggest, it doesn't matter if you're going up or down. It doesn't make any difference. Now, it would if, if, if you weren't doing it that way, then yeah, you'd be counting, and if you were going up or down, you might need to use a negative exponent. This way, so there's, there's a reason I show you guys this way now. Yeah. You mean like write it out like this or? Yeah, I mean I prefer it. Or are you talking you want to do like like 10 to the negative third and stuff like that? That's fine. If you already seen it the other way, fine. But the only thing you do have to show for sure is the factor label method. You have to set it up like this. Because we're not just going to be doing unit conversions like this. We're going to be doing like all sorts of chemical problems, like geometry problems and stuff, using the same setup, just without the, the units. So like I said, you got to learn how to do it this way. But you can use your conversions the other way. Anything else? Any other questions? No? All right.